Rogers deep for Nebraska. Here's Wiley's kick. It's high. It holds up there. Rogers takes the ball at the 30. He's hit and got away. Back up field to the 35, to the 40. He's to the 45. He's to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 20, to the 10. He's all the way home. Well, I was always aware that uh, people were quite a bit bigger. I always I had the impression, though, that I had an advantage because they were bigger. I didn't, uh, <laughs> it was never a matter of, of fear. You know, as I grew older, I seen the fear was F.E.A. false evidence appearing real. It was just an illusion. It was just as much, uh, I always thought that they were more nervous of me than I was of them. It really wasn't until I really, after I stopped playing football, that I really noticed that it was really a, a significant difference. First time I saw Johnny, uh, he was uh, the littlest uh, youngster in a group of about 15 uh, boys. And uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, uh, Johnny really wasn't, he was kind of uh, shy. Uh, I noticed uh, an individual kind of uh, over in the corner uh, looking up at uh, at me when I was talking to a group of, of young people. Uh, and after uh, talking to uh, this group of uh, individuals, I told them what the program would consist of and that uh, basically uh, they would have to come down to the YMCA to participate in the program. Uh, uh, they decided that maybe it was a pretty good deal. So uh, my initial impression of Johnny wasn't really uh, that uh, I wasn't really that impressed with him uh, because uh, he was kind of shy and retiring and, and very smallish. In the, in the time that I was at the Y, we had uh, tremendous athletes, uh, tremendous student athletes that had uh, gone on and, and played in college and in high school. And Johnny was as good, if not better, than any of those athletes in three sports, uh, football, uh, basketball, and baseball. Uh, in, uh, in football, his talents were obvious. Uh, uh, I used him as uh, primarily as a running back and a little quarterback uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in basketball. Uh, he was a, a point guard. Uh, well, he just controlled the action. And in baseball, he was a shortstop. So he was a, he was a tremendously, naturally gifted uh, athlete. Johnny was tremendously tough and durable. In fact, uh, pound for pound, he was probably the strongest and the toughest individual that uh, that I've ever been around whether you're talking about mental toughness or, or physical toughness uh, uh, Johnny was uh, tremendously strong as a 10 year old as an 11 year old and uh, viewing him in high school and in college uh, uh, he probably at playing I probably played what at 165 uh, he probably was as strong as any uh, uh, 215 pounder uh, as far as just having natural uh, strength and and uh, integrity as far as uh, 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 he was a winner. That's why I could describe him. I remember uh, going uh, coming up in uh, Robert's Dairy when I first started. I started at Robert's Dairy, but I, uh, I uh, was too young to really be playing that first year, and so I broke my arm. And uh, I was out, and I really actually uh, didn't get started to the boys' club. In 1963, when we opened the Boys Club, Bill Stonecker, the gentleman I had talked about a moment ago, was a physical education director, and Bill and one, or maybe it might have been two other volunteers, were working with all this raw talent from this neighborhood to put together a football team. And I can remember kids like Jerry Moss and kids like Lindbergh White and a lot of names that people who followed Omaha sports uh, really, uh, really have kept up with Tony Rosses and Willie Bob Johnsons and some of those kids, and a little scrawny guy named Johnny Rogers who was about uh, all of four foot seven or four foot eight at the time. And I remember I'd go out on Sundays, and we would just get killed because teaching football at at that level, you need people who can teach positions and work with kids and particularly work with attitudes. But. A few years ago, we had a little reunion of our football team, and Lindbergh's mother and uh, Michael Carter's mother, who were two kids that played on the team, had some 8-millimeter film of, of Johnny and, and the team in those days. 
And if you've seen the Oklahoma run on film in that 1971 game, we were looking at those runs at this little eight-year-old back, back in those days. And you could just point out, just figure out kids who have talent to, to just God-given ability to be great athletes. And we could tell at that time that there was something special in that little kid by the name of Johnny Rogers. When I first became aware of John Rogers was uh, the, super, the principal of Horseman High School, Eugene Skinner, called me one day and he said he had one heck of a little football player over there that I really should be thinking about because he wanted to come to Tech. And his name, of course, was Johnny Rogers. And uh, I hadn't heard of John or been associated with Horseman in any way. I didn't follow their program that close in those days. So when John finally did come over, uh, everyone told me that John should be a quarterback. Well, I'm looking at this little kid about four foot five and weighed about 110 pounds. And I, I couldn't see a quarterback there, but I had talked to Skinner and I knew of all his athletic skills. So about the second practice, we put him under the center and John said, hut one, hut two. So <laughs> right away we made him a running back. <laughs> Our first year with John it was his sophomore year. He didn't come over as a freshman. And we used him as a cornerback on defense. And it didn't take the coaching staff long to realize that we had a great talent. At the end of the season, we decided uh, we were playing Omaha Bishop Ryan and we had a fairly comfortable lead. And we had a great back by the name of Russell Harrison that was in, John was backing up. So we put John in at the end of the ball game. The first time he carried the ball, went about 60 yards for a touchdown. Well, we can wait for, for next year to begin. John's had a lot of downers. Uh, people in this state really didn't appreciate John for the most part. Uh, they liked him on the football field, but I'll tell you, if the people knew John Rogers that I knew, they would have adopted him as a son. Nebraska came down and talked to me several times. Uh, Dickie Davis and Mike Green uh, came over and uh, talked to me, which were some very, uh, very familiar names, you know, with me at that, at that time. And uh, thought that it would be a good idea now if I did stay around home and to go where the people were really trying to, that were in my corner. It wasn't too difficult to get John to go to Nebraska. And, of course, Coach Bob Devaney had seen uh, undoubtedly films or had watched him play and knew the quality of a football player that he would be getting down there at Nebraska. So we recruited him and uh, were successful in getting him to go down to Nebraska. And uh, then I had the opportunity of watching him play uh, down in Lincoln and seeing 76,000 fans come to their feet every time he got near the ball. And um, it was just amazing. I, I've seen some uh, good football players, uh, some great football players, but probably the most exciting football player I've ever seen uh, was Johnny Rogers. Coach uh, Osborne actually taught me the game. He taught me uh, about the value of being in condition. I mean, Coach Osborne, we would uh, practice the two hours that we'd normally practice, and then uh, he and I would run around the field, and he would talk to me the whole time. And we'd run until he got tired. He very seldom got tired. <laughs> then he'd take me and you know, he would throw passes to me for another 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, we had horseshoes and turnarounds where I'd, you know, I'd have to turn my back to him and he'd call out. And I'd, when I'd turn around, the ball was there. But it made me uh, a lot quicker. It made my catching abilities come up a tremendous amount. And uh, the weight training program uh, brought me up from like a 4.7, uh, 40 down to a 4.4, 4, 40. And, uh, it was a very consistent uh, training. He taught me all that I knew about reading defenses, and uh, you know, although I was able to, uh, to outrun or be out outmaneuver or finesse a lot of guys, he actually taught me how to make things a little bit easier by just knowing where the defenses actually were going to spread out to and where to lay down in the hole. And he actually uh, gave me my education as far as uh, football was concerned and uh, knowing the game. Well, Johnny was uh, maybe the greatest pure athlete that we've ever had here. You know, just a, a guy that could make an impact in a football game, uh, on a punt return, a pass reception, a reverse. Uh, he would have been a great defensive back. 
and uh, Johnny didn't particularly like practice, but when it came time to play the games, uh, there was no better guy to have on your side. Very, very tough. Uh, you know, it's almost impossible to knock him out of the game no matter what you did to him. And uh, had probably the greatest lateral movement I've ever seen in a football player. And uh, so he really contributed greatly to uh, Nebraska football. If I had it to do all over again, I would, on uh, my uh, freshman year in, in college, uh, me and uh, two other guys, uh, as a college prank, went down and took some money from a gas station. And uh, I think a year later, they came and they, they picked me up for that, and I got two years probation and eventually got a pardon from the, from the state of Nebraska for that. But uh, that was the beginning of my career of being college football's bad boy, pretty much the extent of the negative things uh, that, uh, that I actually had done that was really severe. But because of this, everything that I've done has been tainted to some degree actually because of this, and it took me off on a direction uh, that I never would have had experienced uh, if I had not have been involved in that. And not taking us uh, serious about the responsibility that comes along with success, that I made life a lot tougher on me than it actually would have to be. And I was actually uh, tested tremendously about, for it. I don't think that it's something that's going to, uh, with the age of the computer, it's nothing that's ever going to go away. And it's uh, something that I think that uh, all young people should look at in their early stages because not knowing that, you know, life goes by pretty, pretty fast, but it's a pretty long deal and you really can't uh, get over or get past anything. You learn from your good things, uh, you learn from the bad, you know what not to do as well as what to do. What to do. But I think of all the things that I, would, uh, that I could think of, that would be first and foremost. And the second one, maybe I'll learn how to have a little bit better driving record. <laughs> Coach Devaney said I could do everything but drive. <laughs> As I think back to that, uh, that, that, that cold day in Oklahoma, it's, uh, it was probably the biggest football game of, of my, my whole life. I think no way in the world that we knew then that it was going to mean as much to as, as many people as it uh, still represents. Uh, we knew that if we beat Oklahoma that we would probably be national champions. We hadn't went to the bowl games yet, but we knew whoever did go uh, when that game was going to go to the national champion. And there was uh, something Greg Pruitt and I had, uh, had some things going uh, between the two of us too because we were both running for the Heisman. Uh, Nebraska was running for going to against uh, Oklahoma. We were both one and two. I think Colorado at that time was uh, a number three. And uh, we knew that we win football games on big plays, and you have to have, you know, big plays and try to keep the other team from making big plays. I uh, tried to get big plays whenever I had an opportunity, and I was very fortunate uh, on that particular day, and I think in the first quarter. Uh, I very rarely fair caught, you know, the football. And uh, they came down, and they still say I probably should have fair caught uh, that particular football, but you got to pretty, pretty much take some chances. And, I took some chances on that, and I was about as nervous as I've ever been in my whole life. I think that I was uh, throwing up in the in the first quarter all the way up until halftime, uh, just strictly you know from the nerve situation. Uh, but we had some things to do, and I was very fortunate. I was able to 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 lend my small part to it, and uh, and with running a, a punt return that seems to be the most talked about. Uh, football run here, at least in Nebraska, and a lot of the people around the United States uh, think so. And we went on now to have uh, what they've termed as the, the game of the century, one of the best football games that they've had in 100 years. And that's really saying a lot for us since we're, you know, we're still all young people, 100 years of, of football going. And uh, I don't know how long those things will, will last, the game will last, the records will last, but uh, it's been one of the most rewarding experiences uh, to go on for 20 years past and to see the people still give you that much recognition and credit, you know, for excellence. And the people, you know, you, you dare to be great, really can. The biggest memory, uh, most vivid in my mind, uh, of course, Johnny's punt return and, and, uh, and that last drive uh, with Jeff Kenny uh, and things like that, uh, you don't forget those. Uh, but I, I, my most vivid memory, I guess, was uh, standing on the sidelines with about uh, three or four minutes to go and Nebraska was driving towards victory and I was standing here like I am now with my hands in my pocket and I'm saying to myself don't have a heart attack don't have a stroke Fox it's just a game if you lose let's be good about it and all that stuff and I was real my heart was going about eight million miles an hour 
and a guy from a Chevrolet a PR department ran up to me and grabbed me and said, Fox, how can you be calm at a time like this? So uh, I wasn't calm, believe me, but uh, Johnny was a great force in that game with that third down. I think I'll always remember that third down uh, catch that kept that drive alive. It was a, a, a tough catch, and of course that was his specialty, was a tough catch. Johnny Rogers is the, is the best football player I've ever seen. I've seen probably maybe better running backs and Billy Sims or Hopalong Cassidy or something, and I've never seen a better receiver. But for overall football player, just uh, whatever job uh, he took on, he did a magnificent job at. He always came to play on, on Saturday. He was never injured. He didn't miss uh, playing time. He showed up and gave it everything he had. He, he was just a, I think if you had to put him at a left guard, he'd have probably made all big eight. I, uh, he just was that type of a competitor. He wanted to win and did everything he could. And uh, he was just a, a great football player. The, the testimony to that is, is that Orange Bowl game against Notre Dame when they, uh, uh, Bob put him at uh, uh, back and he, he produced five touchdowns. He caught a couple, threw one, ran for a punt return. I mean, the guy was just a, a great, great football player. And uh, he's the only player that I've ever seen in all the years I've been watching that every time he touched the ball, everybody in the stadium got ready to stand up. I mean, he just had that electrical, uh, electrifying quality about him. Coach Devaney was like my father. Coach Devaney uh, really gave me a lot of good advice uh, coming up. He gave me a lot of good direction on things, and I, he was the kind of guy that I think I played harder for Coach Devaney than I actually played for myself. If I made a mistake or I did something that was out of the norm, I felt worse because what would he think about it more so than uh, the significance of what actually had done to me. And uh, it was never a time that I asked uh, the, the Coach Devaney for any help or any assistance or any direction that he was never really there for me. Um, I really didn't know my father until I was about uh, 18, 19 years old. So I met Coach Devaney prior to actually even meeting my father. And uh, he still holds a pretty significant role uh, in my life to this day. I have uh, coached and I've seen a lot of great football players around my different stints in college and in high school and uh, around the country. And uh, I think uh, thinking of any one football player, if I had to say, was the better football player, the best football player that I've ever coached, I would say Johnny Rogers. I mean, John was a guy that uh, made the most use of his ability on the football field. He was not real big. He was not exceptionally fast. But he had probably the finest hands as far as catching a football and holding on to it of anybody that I have ever seen on a football field. And along with that, John had the abilities to move laterally as well as I have seen anybody. He could throw a ball, which he demonstrated in a couple of games uh, in his senior year. And he was just a, a very fine all-around offensive football player, as I say, the best I have seen.
I don't know how long the records will last, but uh, it's been one of the most rewarding experiences uh, to go on for 20 years past and to see the people still give you that much recognition and credit, you know, for excellence. And the people, you know, that dare to be great really can. There's the whistle. We're ready to play football. Bellar's kick is away, and it's a high end over ender into that win. Johnny Rogers takes it at the two. He runs out to the five, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, the 30. He's the 40. He's going to go all the way. Johnny Rogers, man, woman, and child, he's gone. Toledo, 98 yards right down the football field. He took it out to two, came straight up the middle to about the 20. Then he veered to his left. He got some great blocks, broke one tackle, and then cut to his right back into the middle of the field, went all the way to score, and the kick by Sanger is good. Johnny the Jet Rogers.